The desert isn't exactly where you would think of building a mega city, but for the oil-rich country of Saudi Arabia, nothing is impossible. Considered the largest city-building project in the world, this megacity is located in the eastern province of Saudi Arabia on the Persian Gulf, right in the middle of the desert. Known widely as the Jubail II Industrial City, it contains 100 industrial plants, a mega oil refinery, and 530 miles of rail tracks and roads, which is twice the length of the London Underground. So, stick around as we bring you more details on this titanic mega project the Saudi government splashed billions of dollars on. But, before going further, let's look at the historical background of the construction site, Jubail. Human habitation here dates back at least 7,000 years, when the people of Dilmun, whose civilization radiated up and down the coast of the Arabian Gulf, established a settlement there. The presence of Kreis Well, which was the only source of potable water, ensured the continued viability of human settlement. In September 1933, Jubail gained a measure of fame as the landing site for the first team of geologists to explore for oil in Saudi Arabia. It, however, remained a sleepy little dot on the map until 1975, when the Saudi authorities plumbed Jubail for a serious infrastructure makeover, promising to build an industrial metropolis from the sand up. That was the birth of the Jubail Industrial City. For three decades, the build-out of petrochemical plants fertilizer plants, steel mills, and other industries continued with the construction workforce peaking at 40,000 in the 1980s. Having contributed to the gross domestic product of Saudi Arabia, the government decided that a big expansion was necessary. This led to the renewal of contracts with Bechtel, the American firm that handled the construction of the industrial city in 1975. The expansion expected to double the size of the industrial city by 6,200 hectares, was tagged the largest civil engineering project in the world. A budget of $11 billion was allocated for the construction, which would be divided into four phases. Phase one is already built and consists of eight blocks of industrial land. As in any city, the Jubail project plan had to include transportation infrastructure. The proposed transportation system entailed a 3.8-kilometer six-lane highway linking Jubail II to the existing city of Dammam. This main road is considered the focal commercial area within the project, creating robust and efficient communication systems for all mission components. In addition to that, the works for a 1,065 kilometers long east-west rail line linking Jubail with Jeddah via Dammam and Riyadh was built to form a land bridge across the Arabian Peninsula further elevating Jubail's strategic importance. Not forgetting the King Fahd industrial port, to that end, the construction team built an 80-hectare petrochemical key with five new berths to allow room for massive tankers up to 755 feet long and carrying as much as 80,000 tons of liquid petrochemical products. But accessibility is one factor that couldn't be neglected if Jubail II was going to meet its target. To ensure this, a 60-kilometer-long rail link between the industrial zone and the port was constructed, and a further separate rail link connecting the mineral-rich north with Ras al Zawar Mineral City, 85-kilometer north of Jubail, was finished by the end of 2010. This provided access from the north to Jubail's port facilities. Hundreds of other roads and paths have been arranged to lead to smaller towns and areas connected to the site of the project. More than 850 kilometers and 60 bridges were built subsequently. In 2014, phases two and three of the mega project were launched with a target of 100 industrial plants alongside a mega oil refinery. Additional seven blocks of industrial land, various support industries, residential districts for 150,000 people, and power facilities were also included in the phases. However, a mega-project of Jubail II's magnitude called for a strong workforce. In total, about 20,000 strong migrant workers toiled day and night to raise this city from the dust. Such a diversified program on a huge scale is bound to come with its fair share of issues. To put things in perspective, 
Jubail Industrial City covers 1,016 square kilometers, which makes it larger than some countries. To prepare the site, workers had to level entire dunes and relocate more than 35 million cubic meters of sand in the industrial areas alone. Not only that, about 60 million to 65 million cubic meters of sand dunes were relocated in the residential areas. For phase two of the project, the development of three residential districts took center stage in Jalmuda, Mutrafia, and Marduma. The localities are spacious, well-planned, and built for Royal Commission employees. Each of these districts has a span of 10 square kilometers with the capacity to accommodate 50,000 residents respectively. When all three districts are complete, the population of Jubail will have doubled to over 600,000. However, the largest single component of the Jubail II is the new mega refinery supplied with heavy crude from the Manifa oil field and capable of producing 400,000 barrels per day. The refinery's owner, Satorp, is a joint venture consisting of Saudi Aramco and France's Total, each holding a 37.5% share, with the remaining 25% sold to Saudi individuals. With a construction cost estimated at $9.6 billion, the refinery project was split into 15 contracts. France's Technip took responsibility for the front-end engineering design and managing the engineering, procurement, and construction phases. Spain's Technicus Reunidas won a $1 billion contract to build crude and hydro-treating units with construction commencing in 2010. As of 2013, the refinery had begun production. This triggered investments from new industrial tenants who built plants at the site to take advantage of the available petrochemical feedstock. In what was its greatest test of nerves, the project team also completed the construction of a $115 million pump station and pipeline. Suez Energy International took charge of building a $3.4 billion independent desalination plant. The desalination facility includes 27 units and employs multiple effect distillation technology. With an output of 800,000 cubic meters per day of desalinated water, the Jubail desalination plant is the largest ever in the world. On the other hand, Aqua Power Project's firm handled the construction of the city's massive power plant. The company employed the use of combined cycle gas turbines to generate a staggering 2,745 megawatts of electricity. But even though Saudi Arabia is making a hard industrialization push with the Jubail mega program, it's trying not to do so at the expense of the environment. To that end, the Saudi government established a comprehensive program for Jubail to monitor air and water quality, manage solid and industrial waste, and study wildlife. Every five minutes, nine stations in the city measure the air for up to 30 components, including carbon monoxide and ammonia. The information is then wirelessly transmitted to a central computer for analysis. At the same time, 13 stations closely monitor water quality. Electronic probes measure factors such as salinity, dissolved oxygen, temperature, and acidity. Water samples are then analyzed for potential problems, including the presence of heavy metals, with the results stored in a database. In addition, Jubail's wastewater is recycled and reused for landscaping purposes. The excess is pumped into the desert, which has created an ideal environment for Sabkat al Fazl, a popular bird watching spot that draws more than 20,000 birds during peak migration. Phase 4 of the Jubail Industrial City included four blocks for aluminum and smelting facilities, as the kingdom is hoping to stimulate the mining industry. The launching of the Jubail II Industrial City expansion has transformed Jubail from a minor fishing village to a thriving industrial hub. It created over 100,000 jobs for the masses at the turn of the millennium. This includes as many as 20,000 migrant workers who flock to the desert city during peak season to work on the construction project. The little town now produces 7% of the world's petrochemicals, contributes 11.5% of the kingdom's gross domestic product, and creates 85% of the kingdom's exports when not considering oil. It also produces steel, aluminum, plastics, and fertilizers for local and international markets. 
According to a 2014 annual report of the Royal Commission of Jubail and Yanbu, RCJY, Jubail Industrial City had attracted over 50% of the kingdom's total foreign investment, which is a commendable feat. As the project gets closer to its completion, it is hoped that the industrial city will have doubled in size, despite already being the largest city in the Middle East before the new project. Saudi Arabia's desert city is fast taking shape. Let us know what you think about this breathtaking project in the comments section. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. See you soon.